Flags of Our Fathers movie review. Uh, so this, if you'll remember, uh, this movie came out in 2006, 2007. It was a companion movie to Letters from Iwo Jima. Uh, Letters from Iwo, Iwo Jima I already reviewed, so this is the companion movie to it. I, I don't know, maybe I was just a little bit out of it. This movie took me off guard. Uh, when I sat down to watch it. The story I thought I was going to get was not at all the story I got. Uh, I expected just kind of a standard war film. And there, there is a standard war film in here, uh, which is to say sections of this movie uh, are like a standard war film. But there's also a fascinating story here about the photograph from Iwo Jima that I had no idea about. Um, <clears throat> to say too much about it, maybe, would be to spoil the movie, although it is kind of, it's a true story, so it's all a matter of kind of public historical record. <clears throat> that being said, I'm, I'm, I'm going to talk about it. So, uh, I guess this is a spoiler warning, although it is a public historical record. So in addition to being about the Battle of Iwo Jima, this, this movie kind of focuses on that famous uh, photo when the Marines are raising the flag, which it turns out that photo was staged, or to be more accurate, recreated. So they, they did actually do it in real life, but nobody got a good photo of it. So the, the journalists who were there said, okay, you guys do it again and we'll take the photo. So they did it again and they took the photo and there was a controversy about like who was included for the reenactment of it uh, because it wasn't exactly the same people who did it the first time. And then that photo became really famous uh, and these guys, it was used as kind of like propaganda to help support the war because Another thing I didn't realize at the time, but public support for the war was beginning to, to go down. Uh, which, which is one of those things you, like, you never learn in history class, right? You always think, World War II, the good war, not like Vietnam. Um, but yeah, pe people were beginning to get sick of the war by that point. So the, the, the government was uh, using this photo uh, and uh, using the story. And these guys were going on publicity tours and were shell-shocked by it. Uh, that's a bad word. Uh, but were, the transition was shocking for them. Uh, because here they, you know, one minute they had been with their, their brothers in arms kind of slugging it out in the battle. And then all of, them, all of a sudden they're on this celebrity tour uh, and having like the survivor's guilt of having left their friends back in battle where well, they go out on these uh, celebrity tours. Uh, a really interesting story. <clears throat> now, and um, again, a, a, another spoiler, it, it did not end well for all of them. They, some of them did not deal with this fame well. So fascinating stuff, really. Uh, I mean, who knew? Well, it turns out, actually, a bit of internet research. This kind of story has been done before. Uh, if, if you go to Wikipedia page for Ira Hayes, who was one of the, the soldiers in that photo who had a tough time dealing with the celebrity. Uh, the, the, he was, uh, I, I guess they were all in a 1949 movie uh, about the Battle of Iwo Jima kind of playing themselves. Um, but also there was a 1961 movie, I think, made about Ira Hayes' kind of struggles, uh, in which Tony Curtis, I think, was playing Ira Hayes. So, so the story about how these men have dealt with their uh, celebrity, sudden celebrity status, that movie was actually made before, like, long, long ago, if you go to Wikipedia. But uh, certainly, like, for people my age and younger, uh, I, I don't think this story has ever been kind of told before to a mass audience. Uh, so a fascinating, fascinating a uh, story of what really went on behind that picture and after that picture. Um, doing a little bit of internet research, there seems to be some debate about whether this film is a patriotic film or kind of an anti-war film. 
And yeah, you could really go either way with this, as, as you could with a lot of war films. All war films, n not all, but a lot of war films seem to have this debate. Uh, I mean, on the one hand, it's kind of showing the bravery and self-sacrifice of the American troops. Uh, on the other hand, they are kind of showing how the government uh, was taking, taking this image and kind of manipulating it to sell a certain narrative to deliberately sell the war to the American public. Uh, and there were instant, around the time that I saw this movie, which is around the time that it came out, uh, there were parallels to the Iraq war story. Uh, thinking about maybe the death of Pat Tillman and how the, initially the government was spinning one narrative about it, or the Jessica Lynch rescue, where the government was spinning one narrative about it, and then kind of the truth about what really happened came out. But aside from those larger political issues, I thought this was just a really interesting story that made you th think just about the nature of like, what is a hero? Or what does the culture of celebrity do to somebody? Uh, maybe those questions were much more interesting. Now, I said this wasn't a typical war film, but there were kind of elements of a typical war film in it, in that in addition to this story about the photo, there was also scenes of the actual Battle of Iwo Jima. Um, it was hard, the, the battle scenes I thought were confusing. It was hard to tell who was who, uh, you know, the shaky cam and all the explosions and the quick cuts. Um, added to that, the narrative structure of this movie was kind of jumping back and forth in time between the actual battle uh, and between what happened before and after that, which did not help me uh, in terms of like understanding what was going on. In fact, I thought I was halfway through the movie before I had a firm handle on who all the characters were and what was happening. Uh, some of this is intentional. Uh, it was an intentional choice on the part of the filmmakers to kind of have this initial confusion get gradually clearer as you're watching the movie. I thought it could have been edited better. Um, this was one of those movies, when I was watching it, I wasn't so enthralled. Uh, I, I mean, it was okay, but I was uh, getting a little bit bored. I was a little bit... Uh, the pacing of it maybe could have been a little bit different. But then, after the movie finished, it stuck with me. You know, like one of those movies where um, you spend like a couple days thinking about it after you've seen it, and then that kind of fully helps you to appreciate all the, all the themes that were in the movie, uh, rather, rather than just being blown away at the initial movie-going experience itself. And I would recommend it for that reason. Uh, if you haven't seen it already, it's worth watching. Maybe the initial viewing experience isn't, it won't blow you away, but there, there are some things to chew on in this movie. I, I'd recommend it.